Welcome to Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers, talking about beers. I'm Curtis. I'm Cody. And today, we're doing Pub Nog. Pub Nog is a mixture of eggnog and beer. Now, just Hold on with me here. <laughs> I know typically you would do eggnog with either rum or bourbon, right? And you like to make that stuff nice and strong and mm -hmm. grandma then gets a little sloshy and everybody's a little happier for the holidays. But in this case, we're gonna bring some beer into it and hopefully some rather different ones. What do we got? Uh, so we've got a full range of different things. Uh, we got two stouts, a holiday ale. Uh, those are kind of the ones that we think are more to style here, uh, what you would expect to get. And we got an IPA, a sour, a Belgian, a blonde, a sweet potato beer Ooh, sweet from potato. Japan. So we're going to do our traditional now, now learned uh, Bell Brothers Willet combination, a two to one ratio. <laughs> Always two to one, <laughs> if you want to taste the beer. Yeah, exactly. Two times the beer, one times the mixer, because otherwise uh, the mixtures seem to be really strong. Pretty much every time. And for this one, the wife has concocted a special batch of eggnog just for us. So we're not using any commercial grades. Yep. Uh, we'll include the ingredients in the description in case you want to make exactly what we made. Uh, but I'm sure store-bought eggnog will be close enough. Close enough. But if you enjoy watching us get drunk and try out weird things or try out different beers, make sure you head on over to our YouTube channel and like and subscribe. Smash that like button. <laughs> First up, we have Someone poured me a shitty beer. What is this? <laughs> I have an entire cup of head. Somebody needs to fire our bartender. <laughs> uh, this is Guinness Extra Stout and eggnog. And uh, apparently it turned into a pub nog mousse. Uh, I'm gonna have to give this a minute. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I think because of the extra proteins that are sitting inside of the eggnog, mm -hmm. and then you've got the foaminess of when you mix the beer into what's going on. Yeah, I, think I can just see that. Just nucleation super stable crazy. foam. <laughs> yeah, you just get head for days. <laughs> Get a little sip out of it. It's like a, uh, looks almost like a cappuccino. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, you gotta taste it. Mm -hmm. It is, like, strangely enough, like cappuccino is the right term, like latte kinda, I don't mm -hmm. know. There's the, the roastiness of the stout. Yeah. yeah, you get the roasty notes of the stout, a little bit of a carbonic bite, but then you got the sweet and creamy. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm digging this. This is yeah. This, this is good stuff. I did not. Uh, I mean, this is one we one of the ones we expected right? yeah. to work, and uh, sure enough, it works. Will Guinness Extra Stout Pub Nog? Yes. yes. Oh yes. Unquestionably, yes. This, this is good. This is fantastic. I, I think if you mix this and serve this, I, I think people yeah, people be, would like this. This would be a great oh, yeah. holiday drink. Oh yeah. If we had let the eggnog rest a little, because the way we made it, or Liz made it, was uh, we had to like make a meringue out of the egg whites, so it's really foamy, which is. Great, giving it a really good texture. It's nice and light, but uh, yeah, it does make it a little tough to drink. <laughs> this time around, we have Southside Blonde Ale by Perennial Brewing Company. Mixed Perennial with... Artisan Ales. Really? Yes, mm -hmm. Perennial Artisan Ales. What? Um, chow. Anyway, so. From Perennial Artisan Ales. There you go. M mixed with eggnog. <laughs> mixed with eggnog. The aromatics on that, a little. Citrusy, kind of almost IPA. It smells like hoppy. Yeah, it does. It smells very hoppy, which is weird because like the Guinness did not smell. It smelled exactly like the pub nog or like the nog. Mm -hmm. It didn't really smell like anything else. Um, but this one, yeah, with a hint of nutmeg, unsurprisingly. And the flavor does not follow the aromatics at all. Uh, the pub nog raffle stomps the flavors across the board. Uh, it's like a liquidy, or like yeah. a more watered down. I mean, you got like a. There's a hint of a pine and citrus mm -hmm. kind of floating in the background there. It's a real light. It's not bad. It, I, Christmassy, right? If you think an mm -hmm. eggnog and you're like, ooh, pine, you know, and resin, yeah, like, it like does, the Christmas spirit. It does spirit. have some Christmassy feel yeah, to it. Yeah, it's a Christmassy spirited pub nog. <laughs> mm -hmm. So will Perennial Artisan Ales blonde pub nog? Medium-ish? I'm, I'm gonna say yes. Yes. It's different. It is it, not as sweet and like, overpoweringly enjoyable, but it yeah. is complex. Yeah, it's different. It's more beery than mm -hmm. the last one. So I'd say yes, but the, the Guinness one was definitely better. 
So next up we have Saison de Lis. It is a Saison with uh, chamomile flowers from Prairie Arsenales. You mean perennial Arsenales. <laughs> from perennial artisan ales. <laughs> and uh, looks exactly the same as the last one. There's a little bit of like sweetness from the Belgian style, the Saison. Mm -hmm. The spiciness is completely gone. I, I think just the eggnog is dominating that. And I'm not sure the pleasant, it's not pleasant to have that additional sweetness of the beer. It's accentuating the banana. Banana ester is mm, a little stronger. Mm, I just sipped yeah. it again and was like, yeah. what is that? It's banana and clove are kind of coming through stronger. So will perennial artisan ale Saison de Lis pub knock? No, no, no. And, and I think that really stemmed from the Belgian aspect of it, the yeast, like you said, the banana flavor. I'm just not sure that's the right mix for this mix. Yeah, those <laughs> delicate yeast flavors that are supposed to be the whole beer just went <clears throat> and were completely wiped out other than that strong banana note. <laughs> and right. even, even then, when I say strong banana, I don't mean that this tastes like banana. Like it's not banana cream at all. There's a note of banana in the background. We've got an Imperial Stout from Westbound and Down to make some delicious, wholesome pub down. So, Check that visual. Yeah, kind of interesting looking. Uh, you guys can't really see it, it's a little too far away, but it's got like a, this looks like the shakes mom used to make after they sat for a while <laughs> in that layer of foamy uh, <laughs> Metamucil goo. No, no these are more liquid. This one's liquid still. Yeah, yeah you, you can't still turn the cup can't. upside down. But, <laughs> you, uh, you have to like take a knife to it to get it out of the cup. So it's, that's lasting a little longer. Yeah. The color, I really like, like the, it looks like a latte kind of mm -hmm. cappuccino like a latte, look cappuccino to it. Look. That's really nice. Yeah. What does it smell like? Um, you can smell the roast. A little bit of roast, a little oh, bit yeah. of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think some yeasty notes in there. Yeah, but the roast is really kind of a nice twist to it. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's inviting, and more inviting than the last couple we've yeah. had already. It's a nice medium roast, and I, it's got maybe oaky? Maybe like a slight oaky note. Oh, there you go. Oh, it was Asian nice. bourbon barrels. That's where the oak came from. And it helps. The stout is very strong with this oh, yeah, one. This, <laughs> this one is clearly beer with nog. <laughs> yeah. The oh. other ones were more like nog with beer. This one is beer with nog. <laughs> but it tastes no good. Oh, Those yeah. bourbon notes come through nicely mm -hmm. and mix well with the spice and the creaminess. Yeah. Um, it's it's like yeah. that nitro. The creaminess comes from like the nitro that you Oh yeah, it's like, like a it. super nitro. It's super nitro. Yeah, it's, it's not nitro on eleven. So will Westbound and Bound's Imperial Stout? Oh. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yes, very much. Yeah. This yeah. one is yeah. really good. This mm -hmm. is I think number one right now. It's close to our first one too. I thought I thought the delicacy and can maybe the light like lighter soft. I guess the touch. Guinness one was a little more drinkable. Yeah. This one is definitely. Like you would fill this cup and that'd be about all you'd want to drink right. of this. Like it's it's rich. So it turns out stouts will pubnog. Will pubnog. So far. Right, so far. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we have Beniaka from Koedo Brewery in Japan. It's a uh, sweet potato ale. Ooh, sweet potato. You know, that's a seasonal right there. We got Thanksgiving behind us, got Christmas coming up. Why not add some sweet potato to it? And it does kind of smell like uh, sweet potato. You got a little bit of the sweet creamy notes, a little sweet potato note a little, in there. A little yamminess. A little yeah. yammy, a little earthy. Uh, and, and it does, I think it helps to pair well with the eggnog and the aroma. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. The nutmeg kind of works with it. It almost smells pumpkin pie-like. Mm-hmm. Uh, taste, very pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. Very much of the yam-based, like grandma's yams with uh -huh. the caramels with on caramel top. Caramel and some sugar and oh, creamy. Yeah. Mm. Sweet this potato pie right there. This yeah. tastes like a dessert. <laughs> it, yes, this is without question. And it, I'm not, I'm not really picking up. This is nog with beer, not beer with nog. You could uh, slip this by somebody; yeah. they wouldn't even know there's beer. In yeah, it. <laughs> it's, kinda... it's really sneaky. It adds some complexities to it because we tasted the eggnog beforehand. I uh -huh. think the sweet potato kind of amplifies the same flavors in the eggnog. Mm -hmm. Like, you could pass this off as some kind of almost pumpkin pie cream drink. Yep. Yep. Like, yeah, if you want to call it like pump, pumpkin Add some coffee, we can pass fluff. this off as a pumpkin spice latte. Or you can do that, <laughs> yeah. I think you fall in the same category. So, will Cueto's Beniaka pub nog? Yes. Kind of? But it, it's a different yes. It's but a different each, yes. Each time is, is a different This kind tastes of yes. good, but not if you're looking for beer. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think that's what the will it's all about, right? Is that yeah. do they combine to make something greater than the whole, or yes. greater than the parts, mm -hmm. right? And. Does it taste good? Like, there's always different reasons for why they work yeah. the way they work. Yeah. We, we've had ones that came out of left field where you're like, uh, 
That is completely different for why it's a yes, but that's a hell yeah. yes. This time we have Pike's Peak Adamans Holiday Ale. Close enough? Good enough? Close enough. <laughs> Where's Pike's Peak from, Curtis? Pike's Peak is out of Monument, Colorado, close by, and a mentor to us, and hopefully opening Bell Brothers Brewing. Really not a lot in aroma here. There's a bit of like a spicy kind of, let me say holiday ale. I'm thinking like yeah. a Christmas ale mm -hmm. kind of feel. Uh, out of, if you've ever had Samuel Adams Christmas ale, mm -hmm. it smells kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, which tells me that the aroma is strong in Adamans. Sweet is really compounding itself, I think. Yeah, and it's getting into a Maybe sickly, a little over -spicy sickly range. Maybe it's a really yeah, a sweet and a little over spicy now. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's that. got that, that <laughs> overspiced tingle on the, tips of, on the side of your tongue. Mm -hmm. You get this super sweet, almost sickly sweet kind of taste, and then this overpowering spicy, spicy bite, and then the weird palate sensation. Yeah. So, will Pikes Peaks Adamant Holiday Ale pub knock? No. Nope. No. Nope. Stay away from the holiday ale. One. This, I think, is just. It's too much of the Christmas, all the Christmas in one shot, just compounding to make Christmas squared. You yeah. know what I mean? Move on to the next one. Blah. For this one, we've got Compass IPA from Bristol Brewing. I'm sure everybody knows about that one. Um, and if you don't, head on over to Compass and get some IPA. Yep. Head on over to Compass? That's right, that's what I said. I said head over to Compass. Now, head on over drinking. <laughs> head on over to Bristol, get yourself some Compass IPA. Specifically on nitro. Yeah, they, got, they have it on nitro. It's real good. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the creaminess and the eggy kind of run over the eggnog maybe will help kind of amp up the creaminess of this one. Maybe. Um, it's it's definitely amplifying the resin notes. Ooh, yeah, very resiny, a little dank sort of smelling. Right. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. I got the Ronas. <laughs> um, he does not have the Ronas. No, I'm spreading the aromas, it's coating. Yep. No, the I danky, I, I like the smell on that one. It's mm -hmm. doing something kind of like the blonde. Yeah, where it's the really hop flavor somehow aromas. bringing up the hop note. The bitterness of the hop makes that a little rough to put in the palate. <laughs> Let me just say it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep, yeah. Uh, it, the sweetness of the eggnog, not so bad. And then you get like this weird, like super resin super going resin, on, bitter and bitter. sweet. And yeah, it's it is it is sugared broccoli to the max. It is. Yeah, <laughs> this is the quintessential sugared broccoli. So will Bristol Brewing Company's Compass IPA pub nog? No. Ooh. Ooh. And I expect that all American IPAs will not pub nog because of that same kind of combo mixture. Yeah. Next is Petite Sour Blueberry by Crooked Stave. Yep. Uh, got an interesting texture. This one's kind of more like. Foam all the way down. Smell is yogurt. Is that you picking up like a like a yeah, light like Dan in yogurt? Yeah, like a, yeah, kinda. yogurty. That makes sense. You got the oh, lactic right? bacteria in there, so you get a little lactic tang, hint of blueberry. It's like a spiced blueberry yogurt. Yeah, exactly. I'm not against it. It's it's kind of enjoyable as far as that goes, but it's definitely different than what we've had thus far. Oh, oh, that is like a blueberry cream pie. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little spicy, like a little Christmas spice blueberry cream pie. That's, mm -hmm. like I said, that's what we call good shit right oh, there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And that's why I love doing these Willets, because mm -hmm. you find some crazy shit that you didn't expect to will it, but man, it will it good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's exactly a blueberry cream pie. You get a little bit of that tart yogurt mm -hmm. taste, delicious. Mm -hmm. That, that is a Willet. Yeah, that's how you pub nog. Take it to another level. Bring yourself some sour blueberry. Yep, I would say the only thing, not beery at all. Mm -mm. Nope, not no connection to beer whatsoever. No you wouldn't beer. know. You nope. can slip this by anybody. Like I don't like beer. We'll drink this because it doesn't taste like right? beer in the slightest. <laughs> all right, and for a special final, maybe final, we'll see. Um, drink. We have a barrel aged tropical stout from Bell Brothers Brewing. <laughs> oh, get you some of that. We're gonna will it with some Bell Brothers for the first time. Yep, because we had the perfect beer to go with this one. Damn right we did. Maybe. Maybe. Well, yeah. <laughs> we'll find out in a second. We'll find out. How's it smell? That bourbon is uh, dominating. Yeah, that is some <laughs> strong bourbon. <laughs> uh, the aromatics, you get a little bit of like a dark fruit in there, kind of yeah, the back, like a light raisin. And then the bourbon is just yeah, bourbon strong. raisin, sweet. It it's actually smells inviting. Yeah, it's not. I'm not opposed to it. 
But uh, you, you have no doubt in your mind that there is bourbon being mixed into this guy. That's pretty good. Yeah? yeah that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's, it's creamy, it's bourbony, a little roasty. Nice. It's really raisiny. This really Very, amped up the raisin though. Yeah, the dark fruit flavors are really big on that one. Mm -hmm. I mean, the beer itself is really dark fruit forward, uh, but I think that the flavors of the Pubnog really amp up that middle tone. Mm -hmm. Like rum raisin? Yeah, yes. yeah rum raisin or, or a bourbon barrel, raisin. Or bourbon raisin. <laughs> I would say the only thing with this one is it may be a little oversweet. I, I could get you that. Yeah, it is a little pretty sweet. sweet. <laughs> and there's no low note. I'm not feeling like, I thought the roastiness kind of helped to balance that sweetness out in the other pairings. Uh -huh. And this one, because the it's the tropical stout, it doesn't have that deep base note to it. I mean, it. we noted that when we were doing the yeah. review for the beer in the first place was, right. it needs a little more dark, dark chocolate chocolate note to kind of help balance it. Out. So will the barrel aged tropical stout by Bell Brothers Pub knock. Yes. I believe so, yes. Uh, it's good stuff. Yep. It could use some little improvements, but it's still quite drinkable. I'd say it's in a top runner. It's it's not it's not better than the blueberry. No. I, I still it's, think- It's tied that, up there for second, third. Yeah, exactly. We're having a bromance on Bell Brothers, which is elderflower. It's <laughs> <laughs> a sour ale with elderflower and lemon by Funk Works and New Image Brewing. All right. Um, someone had a bromance in the cup. Clearly, <laughs> is uh, curdled, cr 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 creamy. Look at the creamy weird. white, nice and gooey in my cup. <laughs> sour. I'm still getting some of that. It's not as yogurty, but yeah. it's a sour is coming through a little stronger. Sour and funky. There's a hint of a funky note, which is kind of funny because the beer itself doesn't. It's it's more like a goes, like a mm. light goes than mm. than an actual sour mm. beer. Floral. Mm. Yeah. I think the flowers really kind of jamming out on that one. The lemon sour helps mm -hmm. the cut kind of like the blueberry, but I'm not feeling like there's a vehicle to help drive the yeah. mix as much. This is more like plain yogurt. It's like sweetened plain yogurt. Yeah. yeah. So will Bromance 2.0 by Funkworks and New Image Brewing pub dog? Mm. Yes and no. Yeah. It's right on that line. It's, like It's a hard call on that it's one. It's not unenjoyable, but it also mm. just doesn't quite sing, really. I'm, I'm gonna edge towards no. Yeah, it's just, more on the no side than the yes. It doesn't mix well with the flavors, the compositions. I'm losing the pub nog aspect of it. It's not amplifying yeah. that. The, the sour still works. Yep. I, I actually I, think pub nogging sours might be the way to go. It is, yeah. I, I'm tasting this a couple of times. I'm like, I really like the acidic Yeah, the bite. acidity really helps balance the creamy, sweet Big of time. the nog. Yep. But in this case, you got the elderflower that comes in at the end and it's just like, dirty old flower. <laughs> like, right. mm, yum. That's what I really wanted in my yogurt was some dirty flour. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't do as well as I had hoped on that one. Mm. So I think I think cool. what we take from this is that sours are good probably to pop. A nice fruity sour. But you've got to be careful with yeah, what, what else is getting mixed into there. This has been one hell of a great experience. Yep. It's really nice to be able to see straight by the end of an hour of drinking. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not wobbling around all over the place. Wibble, wobble, timey, wimey. Yeah. If you've hung out and watched this video on YouTube, thanks so much. Smash that like. Make sure to subscribe. And keep on visiting us here at Bell Brothers Brewing. This has been Engineers talking about beers. Cheers. Cheers.